What is up? I'm Marcel and welcome back to The Modern Filmmaker. In this video we are talking about graphics cards in DaVinci Resolve, how graphics cards work in DaVinci Resolve, and what kind of graphics card you might need depending on what kind of project you're working on. So the first thing to take into consideration when you're building a new workstation for DaVinci Resolve or upgrading your current workstation is how do computer components work with DaVinci Resolve. Now the CPU actually does a good bulk of the work. Your CPU not only runs the program itself, but it also handles all the compression and decompression of codecs. So that's why if you work with some files like H.264, H.265, or any highly compressed video codecs, uh, you may see the program having a harder time playing things back. And another reason why the optimized media is usually set to DNHR or something like ProRes or an uncompressed uh, file format will run smoother. And in some videos, like this one, the clips are actually from a GH5 shooting an H.264, but I'd already converted the file to a high-res DNHR uh, to get much smoother playback. Uh, while my CPU is pretty powerful, it's not super powerful. And just by having my CPU skip that one little step of decompressing the files as it plays them, it saves my computer a lot of hassle, and I get much smoother uh, playback and much better response from the program. So if you already have a really powerful GPU, you may want to pull up Task Manager and take a look at your CPU while you're in DaVinci Resolve uh, to see if it could be bottlenecking the performance of what your graphics card is capable of. Another component to consider is your hard drives. And if you're working in 1080 or, or less resolution, then you may not run into this issue. But if you're working with 4K, then I highly suggest solid state hard drives. You need to access that footage as quickly as possible. Think about a camera. You know, you throw a little SD card in there, which your SD card is a solid state, small, tiny drive with very, very fast read and write abilities. So let's say my DSLR, the GH5, um, it shoots at at least 150 megabits a second in 4K. So I need to have a really fast hard drive if I expect to have several 4K clips lined out on a timeline and want my computer to grab all those clips at the same time and they're all needing to run at 150 plus megabits a second. I hope I'm not getting too technical here. I really just want you guys to have all the information that you might need. So now let's talk graphics cards. Uh, a GPU will not only help you get smoother playback in the edit, the cut, and the color tab, but it also help you get smoother playback in the fusion screen, as well as how much you can really throw at fusion before your computer's like, whoa! which I used to run into quite often with my complicated node trees, but that was when I was running two GTX 960s. Now I have an RTX 2080 and I'm getting much better playback. And this is because DaVinci Resolve is highly dependent on your amount of GPU memory. They suggest for 1080, uh, a minimum of four gigs of GPU memory. Uh, for 4K, they suggest a minimum of six to 11. And uh, the card I'm working with now has eight gigs of video memory. I've seen no issues so far. Uh, Towards my old cards, when you run an SLI or V-Link putting two cards together, um, what happens is it'll take the memory from one card, but it'll use the clock speeds from both. So it'll use both processors, but it'll only use one set of memory. Uh, so with my two GTX 970s, I was only using one of their four gigs of RAM, uh, which was my bottleneck. That was my problem. Uh, they were processing really fast, but they can only store so much. So now with the RTX 2080 and it's eight gigs of RAM, I'm not only seeing a performance boost, but I'm getting to see Resolve kind of relax. And when I pull up the task manager, I can see even when I'm going really hard, it's usually only using about seven gigs or less of video memory. So I've got my project pulled up of my last tutorial. And you can see I've got my little window here, and then I've got the project I'm working on behind me. And I'm getting 29.97 frames a second, so I'm getting perfectly smooth playback. And I don't have any proxy mode set, so these are two 4K clips on top of each other. They're both H.264, so even with the decompression, um, it's working really well. And when I go to render this, uh, you will see I get pretty good playback frame rates. Um, I've got you know multiple 4K clips, I've got design elements coming out here on the screen and little chops and little cuts and edits and I'm still getting some pretty good playback uh, it's even it's rendering faster than it's even supposed to play back which is really cool my GPU is cranked 
Um, that's probably the color correction and the light uh, text that I have on the screen. And then the CPU is cranked. But let's crank this up a notch and see what we can get with a little more intense of a project here. And in this project, you can see I'm getting similar playback, a little slower, but I've actually got multiple layers of text in each little information call out here. Um, and this is laying on top of 4K video uh, that's been kind of heavily colored. So it's really cool to see that I'm still booking it. And if I take a look at the task manager, we can again see that the CPU is cranked trying to get through this footage while uh, the GPU is kind of chilling. You know, it's, it's definitely working hard but it's not having too hard of a time with these multiple text layers. And if I head over to the edit tab of this project, I can show you exactly how the texts are laid out because it actually is somewhat complex and uh, it kind of surprises me that I'm getting this good of playback. Um, you can see that this text kind of pulls up with this black border behind it and then the text fades in on top of it. And if I go into the compound clip and open in a new timeline, you can see that I've got three separate fusion text layers that are all keyframed to animate in separately. So if you're doing just light 4K video editing with a little coloring, um, some text animations, uh, then you'll be totally fine with a card like the RTX 2080 or something similar with eight gigs of video memory because you can see here that I am almost hitting seven gigs of video memory and this isn't that complex of a timeline. Uh, so let's go ahead and move on to something even more complicated and see what we can pull off. So some of you may never try to go this hard in Fusion, but if you do, it's good to know that it's totally possible. Uh, so let's say you wanted to make the Earth in Fusion, and literally the Earth. Uh, if I pull up this reflect uh, material here I have, and I move around the lighting, you can even see that I've got different materials set to reflect with the lighting. So if the light moves over here, and let's say the sun's over here, then you can see the night lights come on. And if I move it over here, same thing goes. Um, as well as I've got this 3D camera, I've got a light and a 3D camera. And of course, if I move the camera around to a darker part, then you can see, once again, we, under the clouds, we've got all this stuff going on. Plus, plus, I can't believe there's a plus, but there's a plus. Plus, I've got the ability to move around these cloud uh, layers that are on top. As you can see, that I'm moving around the clouds without moving the world underneath. It's like its own atmospheric layer, which is really, really cool. And I've got that actually keyframed uh, to kind of move along as this video plays. And also the light kind of changes. So if I try to play this, you know, it's going to try to cache the image for us before it really shows us what's going on, just to make things simpler on the computer. And of course, it's going to cache that to our GPU memory and our system memory. Uh, so now that it's got a little bit done, because it's really kind of booking through this, this is pretty intense. Uh, now we can play it back and you can see that subtle movement of the clouds kind of orbiting around uh, the Earth which is really, really, really sick. I mean, I was just telling the everything man the other day, I was like, dude, fusion is so intense. You could literally build worlds in this thing. And then I find myself last night building a world. So let's dive a little deeper and figure out what GPU would be good for you. Um, if I come over here to Puget Systems, they make custom workstation systems for DaVinci Resolve and video editing in particular. So really cool uh, website, uh, definitely check it out. Uh, if you can afford one, buy one. I wish I could, maybe later. Um, but for now, we will use their great information because they've gone through and they have kind of um, benchmarked a lot of great gear. And you'll see here, one thing that you'll run into is in an RTX or a GTX card, you're not gonna get 10 bit. And the thing is, uh, Nvidia did not enable your computer to realize that the RTX card can do 10 bit. It actually can do 10 bit and it will do 10 bit in 10 bit games uh, or play 10 bit video at a certain platforms. But overall for video editing and Premiere, After Effects, DaVinci Resolve, it will not recognize that card as something that can work in 10 bit. But in the Quattro cards, all the Quattro cards kind of unlock that ability. They kind of check that checkbox. So in theory, you could get the cheapest Quattro card and just run it alongside your RTX or GTX card, and you should be able to enable 10 bit. That's in theory. So if you're looking for a cost-effective option, because a lot of us that are trying to build a business do not have that kind of money or even that kind of credit to go put in to gear like that. So on the benchmarks in the Puget Systems website, you'll see that the RTX 2080 Ti kind of takes the cake. 
and uh, second place um, in this list here would be just a normal 2080. Um, now if you come down here to the Quattro benchmarks, we're seeing much better performance, but honestly, I mean, think about it. You're paying at least 2000 for the Quadro RTX 5000. I paid about 800 for my RTX 2080, and we're looking at better performance in the RTX 2080. Now, the only thing is the GPU memory. If you're a beast, if you're going really hard, if you're planning on building um, much more than just Earth and Fusion, then definitely you'll want to go with a Quattro card that has a lot of GPU memory. Um, like the 16 gig here or a 24 gig card um, but one thing you can do which I, I, I still kind of think maybe I should have done this maybe this would have been a better call but only time will tell I'm hoping that RTX comes with some added benefits that uh, are not quite prevalent yet but what you could do if you want to save a little money is go with a GTX 1080 Ti which has comparable processing power to a 2080 but it has a lot more video memory it's got 11 gigs of video memory and my uh, my card is clocked at I think around 17 uh, or 1800 Hertz boost most GTX 1080 Ti's run around 15 to 16 uh, megahertz uh, so you can kind of take a dip of performance there but as we've kind of gone over the GPU memory with DaVinci Resolve is a big thing so if you're trying to save money and maybe later on you get the one GTX 1080 and then you pair that with another GTX 1080 Ti and you still got the one card with 11 gigs but then you have the two processing powerhouses working together um, so that could be a really cool option so once again this is a really good website to kind of check out you know where cards lie when you're trying to look at you know I've got this wish list on Amazon of cards and uh, I want to know which one's gonna be gonna give me the best bang for my buck um, this is a great website to go to this website also refers to uh, AMD cards as being a better bang per cost um, you will get better performance out of the NVIDIA cards, but you will pay more for that performance. So if you're really, really trying to save uh, a buck or two, you may want to look at something like the Radeon Vega um, or another comparable AMD card because um, they cost a lot less. Now, AMD cards aren't going to have the CUDA cores, which are also suggested for DaVinci Resolve. I feel like the NVIDIA card would give me better future proofing. Uh, and we all know that NVIDIA has kind of led the way in the technology and they work really closely with a lot of these NLE companies like Adobe and uh, Blackmagic on getting the best optimization with the programs. So with all that said, I hope this really cleared some air for you guys. Um, it's tough right now. I wish I had all the answers, but we all know that DaVinci Resolve is kind of going through some growing pains right now. Um, some really good growing pains. They're adding a lot of new features and they're really working hard on optimization. Um, so some of this information might change in the future, but as of right now, this is what we know. And if you liked this video, please click that like button. If you didn't like the video, click the like button anyway. If you have any comments, questions, or concerns, leave them in the comments section down below i always reply and make sure to subscribe if you like videos on davinci resolve i make them all the time and as always guys i'm marcel and this has been the modern filmmaker and i will see y'all next time peace